in part one of the series, I taught you about what does it take to go to heaven. And I said, it's not about being good, it's not about going to church, but it's about saying a prayer. A prayer, and if you say that prayer with sincerity, you get to heaven. Now, when you die, there are two possibilities. You would either go to heaven, or you would go to a place called hell. Now, when every human dies, you get a new body. It's called an immortal body, one imperishable body. That's what the scriptures say. So every human being, you never cease to exist, but you get this new body that never dies. So the term is an imperishable body, one immortal body. Now that body goes either to be with God forever in heaven, or if you don't make it to heaven, then you go to really a place that you will never like, called hell. Now I'm gonna tell you later on about heaven and a little bit about hell, but let me ask you the question, why would God have wanted blood sacrifice under the old covenant? So in the old covenant, when someone sinned, they had to get forgiveness for sin. Why? Because if you sin, you could never make it to heaven because sin and God could never mix. It's like if you put oil in water and you turn it as many times as you want, the oil will never mix with the water. The oil will always come to the top. So God and sin could never mix. And so God made human beings and God really desired that every human being, you know, will, will come to be with him forever in heaven, which is a beautiful place, a place of joy, a place of happiness, a place of eternity, where there is no more pain, no more suffering. God wants everyone to come to heaven. But if you had sin, you could never make it to heaven. So in the old covenant, God allowed blood sacrifice to be the way for the atonement, for the redemption, for the forgiveness of sin. Why? Well, when you sin, you really lose your life in terms of eternity. You could no longer make it to heaven. So the old way was you had to take an animal and God accepted that when you shed the life of an innocent animal, you're saying what God allowed the life of that animal to substitute for your life. So that the life of the animal and the blood of the animal was when it was sacrificed, God's way was to accept that for the atonement, for the forgiveness or for the cleansing of sin. That was the old way. But like I said, God was fed up of the amount of blood sacrifice that he saw. And so he said, I have no pleasure in all of this blood sacrifice and all of these animals that were offered. And so God, sent a final sin offering to the world. So God made it possible for there to be one final sacrifice that will cover the sins of all human beings. Now, how could God let one single sacrifice be a covering for everybody in the world? It had to be a real special sacrifice. And that's what God did. God himself became a human being and God allow himself to be sacrificed to be the final sin offering. So when we accept that Jesus died for us, that is the final sin offering. God desires no more blood sacrifice. So let's get the background to this well. So God was fed up of seeing all the sacrifices in the world. Now question is, why did God not choose a man or a woman to be a sin offering? And the answer is, every human being in the world have sinned. The scripture says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We have all sinned and we have all come short. So no human being could have died for the sins of others. So when Jesus came into the world, remember I told you that the Spirit of God, a portion of God's Spirit that was called the Word, was born of the Virgin Mary, and that's how we have Jesus. So God became a human being. Now, it was important that Jesus never sinned. 
And that is why when Jesus was in the earth, he had to go through some major temptation. You know, Jesus had gone into the wilderness and he had fasted for 40 days. And at the end of 40 days, Satan himself came to tempt Jesus. And he said something to Jesus, if you are hungry, command these stones to become bread. You know, he, he tried to tempt Jesus. Now, if Jesus had only listened to Satan and done what he said, Jesus would have failed us. And so Jesus always said to Satan, get thee behind me. And he, you know, he pushed him aside. He never listened. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. So Jesus withstood all the temptation. In other words, Jesus was the only human being that ever lived in this world that never sinned. And that's why only Jesus could have become a sin offering. So, yes, now that you understand, the only human being that ever lived in this world without sin was Jesus. That's why when, when he was tried by the Romans, he was condemned of all kinds of things. They said he committed treason, and they said he's a blasphemer. They said everything about Jesus, but there was no evidence. So Jesus was declared innocent. Now, only an innocent animal or an innocent life can be offered for sin. And so when they beat Jesus, yes, he took a brutal beating. And they weren't satisfied, so they say, nail him alive. And so the worst, the most brutal human punishment, the, the worst of the worst and the most terrible punishment a human being could ever go through is to be nailed to a cross. Alive, I mean, you're alive and they, they pierce you with these big pins and they, you're hanging there for hours and you're suffering on the weight of your body. It's the most excruciating pain is the worst punishment that any human being can go through. And so Jesus took the worst, the, the, the worst pain, the, the most pain that any human being could endure. No, he was God. He could have called a legion of angels to deliver him, but no, he took it all. In other words, he met his, his purpose. He fulfilled his mission. He came to die for the sins of the world. And so, you know, people say, but how could how could God, in, if he was God, how could he allow men to beat him? The answer is that was the purpose why he came. Jesus came to be a sin offering. He came to be the final blood sacrifice. And so when they nail him alive, his blood was shed, and that blood is for the atonement, for the cleansing of sin. And so when we accept Jesus, it covers every human being. There is no need to sacrifice any more animal. So, you know, no need to sacrifice another animal in the world. Jesus became the final sin offering. And that's why we have to accept him as our Lord and Savior. Now remember, there's, there's two verses of scripture that everybody in the world need to understand. John 3, 16, and John 3, 17, for God so loved the world. God loves every human being, every color, every race, every creed, the rich, the poor. There is nobody in this world that God doesn't love. God loves even people that commit crime. God loves every single human being. Now, he doesn't always love what we do, but he loves us just like a parent would love a child. You know, when we are growing up, you know, we do all kinds of things. You know, we spill things in the house. We, we may break a glass. We, we do wrong things as children, but our parents forgive us. It's the same way with God. It's the very same way that God died for this, all of our sins. And his blood was shed for every sin. So God loves every human being. Don't ever think, if you, if you sit there and you wonder, and you say, nobody loves me, you are wrong. God loves you endless. And God wants no human being to go into the burning fire. Now, why did God create a burning fire? God created the burning fire for the evil one, for Satan and his demons. So hell 
was created for Satan and his demons. God did not make hell for human beings. God made a heaven, a heavenly home, that every human being can find a way to go with God and, you know, literally in heaven, there is eternal happiness. No more sadness, no more tears, no more weeping, no more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness. None of the unhappy things of the world exist in heaven, but it's a place of eternal happiness. Can you think of a time and a place where you were just happy beyond words can describe? You were so joyful and happy and excited. That's how heaven is going to be forever. And so God wants nobody to go to hell. Now, now I say to God, God, how can you love people? How can you be a God of love? And, you know, when people die, sentence them to hell. And God says, I, I want nobody to go to hell. That's why I made it so easy. How easy it is just to say a prayer, just to accept Jesus died for your sin and to ask Jesus to come into your heart. That's all it takes. That's all it takes, right? So God will say, listen, you don't have to pay money, you know, you don't have to give a dollar. You don't have to give a $10,000 to go to heaven. Heaven is called a free gift of God. Hear me well. We go to heaven because of God's grace. What is grace? Grace means unmerited favor. We didn't earn it. We didn't work for it. But heaven is a free gift of God. Yeah, we, the, we, we are saved by the grace of God, the, the unmerited favor. We don't have to do anything to earn. It's God love us so much that he gave us a free gift. The gift is that he allowed Jesus to die for you and for me, and we have to accept his death and by saying the prayer. Now, don't get confused with my teaching. What about good works? Well, good works has its place. You see, when you get to heaven, there is a judgment. Now, there are two judgments that people will face. A judgment of the righteous, the people who get to heaven. And 1,000 years after, I'll explain later, a judgment of sinners. So the first judgment in heaven is for the people who make it to heaven. So when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and you get to heaven, there's going to be a judgment. Now, we are not sure how long this judgment will take, but every, everybody that gets to heaven will be judged. And what you're going to be judged by, what have you done as a human being in your life that God can bless you in eternity? Now, this is where good works come in. When you get to heaven and when you are judged, God will say, what good works have you done? And you say, well, I help the poor, I give charity, I use my money to help the gospel, I went to church, I prayed, I fasted. Good works gets reward. It's like people who preach the gospel, and I'm going to tell you more about this later. So good works are rewarded in heaven. Now, how are you rewarded? Well, there are different crowns that you get. So you get crowns that you wear in heaven, for the good works that you have done in heaven. Now remember this, when you get an honor or a reward on the earth, it's maybe for 20 years, 30 years, or you know, most of your lifetime, but that's less than 100 years. But when you get a reward in heaven, it is for eternity. Heaven is forever. Heaven is never ending. You know, I, I can tell you some heavenly mathematics. You know, here is heavenly mathematics. If you say, you know, in heaven, you know, when we say a thousand minus one, 999. But when you say a thousand minus eternity, what remains? Eternity. Eternity never ends. Forever and forever, never, ever ending. So when you get a reward in heaven for the good works that you do, that reward and whatever recognition you get in heaven lasts forever. So if you spend all your time on the earth working for money and, you know, corporate wealth and have, you know, big 
global corporations and you make billions of dollars, yeah? But what have you earned to help you in eternity? Now, one of the saddest things that could happen in the life of a human being, someone could be a billionaire in the world, someone could have great accomplishment in the world, and the only thing that goes to heaven is what you do for God. The good works that you do for God is all that will bless you and get you rewards. So imagine that someone is a multi-billionaire and when they die, they have nothing to take to heaven. And they will say, my goodness, I regret. I need, Lord, give me a chance to come back into the world that I can do good works. And it's gonna be too late. Now I'm gonna tell you a story I hope I have enough time in, on, on this section to tell you. You know, I am both an academic and a professional. You know, I started, you know, a business school and partnered with British universities to offer, you know, undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And I was excited about educating people. But one day I felt like I was going to die. You know, and uh, I felt like in five minutes my life would leave me. It's, you know, I was lying on the bed. I called for my doctor. My doctor wasn't there. I call and I call my wife and I call, you know, her brother and I say, pray for me. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die praying. And as, as I'm praying, I realize in five minutes I'm gone. And I feel like my life is, is lifting and I felt like I'm leaving the world. Honestly, I felt I'm leaving this world in five minutes. And I felt an emptiness, a really frightening emptiness. I was carrying nothing to God. I remembered everything I had worked for, my great education, my business success. I was leaving everything behind and I was carrying nothing to God. And I said, Lord, please don't take me. Lord, give me a chance. Give me a chance and I will live for you. And so, of course, I didn't die. And I changed my life from that day. And that's how I became a minister. And of course, I became a pastor. And I do a lot of radio program and television program that goes across the world. In other words, I spend as much of my time doing things that would bless me in eternity. Yes, I still run business. I still was an educator for, for many years of my life. But I have said, no matter what, I will do things in this life that will get me rewards in eternity. So remember well, we, we get to heaven not by good works, but we get to heaven by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And our good works get us rewards in heaven, but the rewards are forever. You know, so many people make the mistake of life of living for the life on the earth. They want to get a great house, a great job, a great education. They want to have a great car. They want to have vacation. And all these things are wonderful. And they do nothing to help them with eternity. They do nothing to help them to get to heaven. And what a sad day it will be. Many will cry and say, Lord, please give me a chance to go back into the earth. When people die and they realize they're going down into hell and hell is forever. Hell is an eternal burning fire. Uh, you know, you've you got to believe this. You've got you to gotta understand God did not make he hell for you. But when you get to hell, this, this immortal body that you have will burn and you will feel pain forever and forever and you will long forever to get a drop of water, but you will suffer forever and forever. And God will say, I made an easy way for you to go to heaven. But if you reject God's way, you know, it's up to you to reject the way to get to heaven. But if you reject the way to heaven, then you go into the eternal burning fire and you will pay the price forever. You regret forever, but it's too late. So please, if you love this series, right, if you like it, comment and share. Because this is the greatest knowledge, the greatest accomplishment of life is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and to get the gift of eternal life. There is nothing greater, not billions of dollars, but getting eternal life is the greatest accomplishment that any human being can achieve in this life. 
So God bless you and bless you. As I said, if you like it, comment and share. Amen and amen.